What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Today we're going to talk about uh, something other than a review. I guess you could call it a review. It's my views on continuity on comic book characters uh, being brought to the big screen. Um, hugely successful television shows being brought to the big screen and, and what's being done to us in our mind. Okay, this, Once again, let me put it to you like this. This is all my opinion. And I'm sure there's some users and viewers out there that share my opinion. And there's going to be some that don't. And those that don't, I don't care. Okay, so we're just going to put it to you straight. Let's start out. 1989, the Jedi, yours truly, was in Baumholder, Germany. And a good friend of mine, Ken Hughes, hats off to you, brother. Hope you watch this somewhere down the line. Love you to death. And another young man by the name of PFC Christopher Scott Ginn from New Orleans, Louisiana. Or Bogalusa, my bad. Love you, brother. Hope to see you guys again someday. We all went out. On the economy, as they called it in that time, we went out into the local village of Baumholder to a movie theater to watch Batman. Well, to be quite honest with you, anybody who lets Tim Burton near any character of theirs that ever grew up with a comic book or was ever in a comic book ought to be shot between the eyes. Tim Burton is the epitome of the artistic, um, what do you call it, the artistic uh, licensing, okay? What did he do with Batman? First of all, he cast Michael Keaton. Michael Keaton plays an awesome Bruce Wayne. Conflicted. Batman, he just didn't do it for me. Okay? And then you've got um, the Joker, okay, that was played by Jack Nicholson. Let's face it, nobody plays a psychopath quite like Jack Nicholson does. But Jack, far be it from me to say these words, was a little bit heavier than what he should have been to play the part of the Joker. The Joker is a frail bony, tall madman. He's a homicidal maniac. Um, you know, I'm glad to see that we got back to the homicidal maniac and not the laughing uh, liquor store knocking over Cesar Romero. So, what happens in this movie is, uh, well, in the end of it, they absolutely, they just kill off the Joker, which is a farce. And then on top of that, you've got this crap about Jack Napier being the one that killed Bruce Wayne's parents, when we all know it was Joe Chill. And Joe Chill's mother was Mrs. Chilton, and she was the one who ran the halfway house in Park Row and took care of Bruce and his family uh, back, you know, took care of Bruce when he was a kid. So you've got all this stuff going on, okay? And this, have you ever danced with the devil by the pale moonlight? And they say that they do this artistic licensing so they can make these movies more appealing. Folks, Batman has been around for almost 60, 70 years. Bob Kane wrote these characters during the Great Depression when he was sitting in his mother's kitchen while she was baking bread that Bob would turn around and deliver to people to make a little bit of money so that they could survive. And he would take what little paper she would allow him to buy and he would draw Batman characters out on these breadboards. I mean, people are going to like these movies and here in recent, uh, the recent movie that just came out, um, Dark Knight, you know, is, a, is reminiscent of that, okay? So, you don't need to be changing things up. Uh, let's see. Let's go a little bit deeper into it. Uh, which one was it? Uh, Batman, uh, Batman Returns. Oswald Cobblepot. Now, that one was put together good for the Penguin, but the Penguin had human hands. He didn't have flippers, okay? So, they made that a little bit ridiculous. Uh, Selena Kyle, they did that one okay with the Catwoman, but they're still campy. Now, if you remember back when the original Batman came out, Prince did this uh, video called Bat Dance, and they had him half made up. One side was Joker, one side was Prince. Okay, when they had him half made up, there there is videos on YouTube of this. Go back and look at it, and I think you'll agree with me. Nobody, I mean nobody in that time would have made a better looking Joker than Prince. They could have done something with the camera angle to make him a little bit taller, but and they could have worked with him on his acting to play a psychopath. I don't think so. I think Prince, all he had to do was spend some time alone in an asylum somewhere and come into touch with his true insanity. Don't get me wrong, I mean, I love Prince. Who doesn't? I mean, the guy's a musical genius. But anybody who can sit and turn their name from Prince all the way over into a symbol and call himself the artist, 
definitely is in touch with his insane side. Then we go on, and that, that's all the Tim Burton era, those two movies. And then we get in to the Joel Schumacher era. Okay, why did Schumacher put nips on Batman? Nobody knows. Okay, it was friggin' ridiculous. You went through six or seven different actors playing him. Okay, you've got um, George Clooney. George Clooney, <coughs> once again, awesome Bruce Wayne. If you take out the campiness, Batman, uh-uh. And then you had Val Kilmer. Not such a great Bruce Wayne, but a pretty good Batman. But he was dealing with the whole Schumacher thing in that whole era. And we won't even go into that. I mean, years ago, when Robin died, readers such as myself were given the opportunity to vote. Do you kill off the little boy bird, or do you let him live? The whole point of the matter was Robin was introduced into the 50s and 60s to give the younger audiences something to, like, bond to. And what it turned into was calling Batman a queer and everything else that he had this young boy living with him, and it was just ridiculous. And Robin was always holding him back from his true darkness, his true vigilante, keeping him from being the true dark knight. So all of us readers, we voted to kill off Robin. What happened? Who was the perfect one in the killing joke? It was the Joker. He beat him to death with a crowbar. All right, blood flying everywhere. Awesome graphic novel, one of the best ever to come out of the Batman series, in my opinion. And they finally got rid of Robin. Okay, Chris O'Donnell played a pretty good Robin. You know, I got to give him that. If he didn't have nips, but he had nips. All right, now we get into Christopher Nolan. Okay, Christopher Nolan comes in with Batman Begins. He's got, um, oh God. You know, he's, he, he's got the perfect actor to play Batman. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm at a loss for words now. Who was the Batman, Sean? Who played him? Christian Bale. Yeah, Christian Bale. Duh. Okay, Christian Bale played the perfect Bruce Wayne. He played the perfect Batman. The man was born to play this role. Okay, we saw the Dark Knight for what he was. A demon-conflicted person, missing his family, feeling like it was all his fault. And for all the riches in the world, there was nothing he could do but to take up the mantle of Batman and try to make things straight, even though he knew he can't do that. So that was awesome. All right, now, totally cool. Now we come into um, Dark Knight. Okay, now, never since Jack Nicholson has anyone played a psychopath quite to the level that the late Heath Ledger plays a psychopath. He did an outstanding job on the Joker. But once again, we get into this stupid artistic licensing as that the Joker was never white-faced, it was makeup, and that his uh, smile was a scar. And I guess it opened up to where he could say, do you know how I got these scars? It needs to go back to what it was. The Joker was a person who wanted to be a stand-up comic, and he sucked at it. His wife hated him because he couldn't bring home the money. They had a baby. They were getting ready to get kicked out of their apartment. Some local crooks had this thing called the Red Hood. They meet him in a bar when he's all down and out. They, they have a different criminal be in the Red Hood every night so it can't be traced back to them. And he goes into the Ajax card, uh, Ajax card company, and he goes in there to do a job, and Batman shows up. Boom, he falls into the liquid. His skin's bleached white. His muscles in his face stretch out, and you get the evil grin. And then on top of that, he doesn't know what he's going to tell his wife now. He goes back to his apartment. Now it's ablaze and on fire. His wife and child are dead, and nobody cares one way or the other. This pushes the Joker off the deep end and causes him to be what and who he is. Now, they even attempt to kill off the Joker in this one. And did they kill him off? I can't remember. They didn't kill him off, did they? So they didn't kill the Joker off in this one. But now everybody's like, oh my God, Heath Ledger's dead. Who are we going to get to play the Joker? Well, it didn't stop them last time. They had, what, 15 different Batmans? Why can't you find somebody to play the Joker? I mean, give me a break. Go back, see Prince, paint his butt up, do the continuity the way it's supposed to be, and have him act insane. Everything's going to be okay. Now... Why is Spider-Man's continuity so correct? Why, when you watch the Spider-Man franchise, um, why is it that Spider-Man is so popular, insanely popular, and nobody's griping about it? 
Well, because Stan Lee is still alive and nobody's screwing with his creation. That's why. So if Stan Lee died tomorrow, God forbid, and they made a Spider-Man whatever, they would start changing shit left and right because they could. And they, they shouldn't be doing this. Now, this brings up another aspect for me. Star Trek. Here we're watching Star Trek. Everybody's happy to see the old crew in their younger days. The casting was done very well because none of us really know the true origins of each one of these people. So therefore, it's kind of new to us, right? But we do know that the movie-making magic out there could have taken the original Enterprise from the original series, done some CG graphics, and came up with a ship that looked exactly like the Enterprise that we all know and love, the NCC-1701. But no, they got this big, goofy look in the cells on the thing that looked like a freaking toy, and it looks nothing like it. You got Spock and her running around having this little love connection, which would never happen. They, they hint at Nurse Chapel having the hots for him in the original series, but we never see Spock going this far. So what do they do is they turn around and they try to play this off like it's an alternate reality, a different timeline. Okay, all right, I can deal with that. But even in the original series when we had an alternate timeline, we still had the same damn ship. They just changed their uniforms and their mannerisms and their personalities around. We can all live with that. Leave the Enterprise alone. Okay, just leave, leave it alone. And at least Spock the way he is. Other than that, the movie was very well done. Uh, Christopher, uh, Christopher Pine did an excellent job as James T. Kirk. I mean, amazing. Especially my favorite part is the very end. He's now a full-fledged captain, and he comes on to the bridge, and, and forgive me for my bad imitation, but he's like, Bones! Buckle up! And he goes and sits down in the captain's chair, throws his leg over a little sissified like Kirk used to do, but nobody would say, Hey, Captain, you're sitting like a sissy because he'd do some judo shit and jack you up, right? So... He did an awesome job, a completely awesome job as Kirk. Everybody did a good job in their roles, especially, uh, I can't remember the actor's name that did McCoy, and whoever this guy was that did Spock, I can't remember his name either. Who was it, Sean? Zachary Quinto. Okay, Zachary Quinto did Spock. He did a wonderful job. If they had just let him be Spock and not some conflicted, lovesick Vulcan for the Swahili woman, <laughs> Uhura. So... You know, you come into all these different things and all these different um, aspects. But what it all boils down to is continuity. Folks, if it's not broke, don't fix it. You know, we just want to see things the way it's supposed to be. The comics the way they're supposed to be. You know, what's next? In the next 30 years, are they going to re redo Harry Potter? Is he going to be a girl? Is it going to be Harriet Potter and a sorceress's stone? You know, is it going to be something like that? Or are they going to do, redo Family Guys that going to be a single lesbian mom? You know, uh, or like American Dad, single lesbian American mom? And is Stewie going to be a girl? I mean, they just start messing with crap so much and to such a point to where sometimes we don't even want to go see these movies, but we go see them because we want to see these characters again. And I don't know if anybody else feels this way, but I do. I mean, you know... Uh, Dark Knight would have been much better if you, if you took the insanity acting of Heath uh, Ledger and you made him look like the Joker and not just some psychopathic kid with scars on his face that couldn't get over it and got st his lunch money stolen and turned into this guy wearing makeup. I mean, but all in all, for the most part, it was a really awesome movie. They just need to quit messing with these characters. You know, just just leave him alone. Take the role of Stan Lee. Stand up for your rights. And you know, I cannot believe J.J. Abrams even allowed the the Enterprise to be changed around the way it was. He's been writing Star Trek novels for years. He meets the fans. He knows what their passion for Star Trek is. But yet he does it. And thank God that George Lucas is still alive. Because I'm telling you, dude, George, if God forbid you ever kick the bucket on us, Darth Vader's going to be a chick. And Stormtroopers will all have boobs, and it's just going to be awful, and, and it's going to be the next conflict is whether or not you want to come out of the closet. Does the debater want to come out of the closet? So, you know, take it for what it's worth. This is the Jedi. I thank you for listening to my rant, and if you feel the same way I do, hit me a comment. If not, hit me a comment. Oh, well, but don't get hateful with it because I'll ban you. Peace.